Hi everybody, John Blunt here again. This is our certification video for the wide belt sander, which is con conformed in a manner very similar to a planer, except it's designed with a sanding belt instead of a cutter head. And it doesn't take much material, it's a finishing sander. So the wood goes in here, the top side of the wood gets sanded. The control panel is right here. And unlike our planer, uh, the controls are electronic. They're not as, as intuitive as the planer, which has a big wheel, which obviously makes things move. So you have to learn the sequence of, of, of all of the um, entries here. And uh, you have to understand the limits of how much you can cut. So I'm going to show you the inside of it, give you a brief look, and so you can actually see how the mechanism works, learn a little bit about the belt and the rollers. It's all pneumatically controlled, so that's the reason for these uh, keypads. Come on over here. You get to the belt and the rollers through this left hand door right here. You can see this is uh, a large roller. It's, it's soft slightly. It's a fairly hard rubber, but it is rubber. There's a, uh, an idler roller on the top. You can see that right here. And it's pneumatic tightening. So to loosen the, the belt, you turn this, it releases the pressure and it drops. This piece right here, right there, is a, a block and, and a cam tightener to keep it from lifting up when you put pressure on it with a piece of wood running below. Just set that right there for now. But you have to take it off because there's no way you're going to put your belt in there if it doesn't have an opening. So, I'm going to take the belt out. Yeah. That's how you take it out once you've got, got it opened up. And then you have to look inside and look for the numbers. We have to add if you ever, you're here, working here, and you get one of these belts out, uh, and a new one, it needs to be marked because the marks that are on it wear off completely. You cannot really tell if that's a sharp 120 or a dull 80 grit. It does make a difference though. 80 grit will cut deeper, but it won't feel as much different. So you, you just want to take it out and check it, and there's 120, and it's in decent shape, so it gets to go back in. A little tricky feeding, getting it started. But once you start it, it slides easy. And then you see that little device. We'll get to that in a second. Let me explain how it tracks. You gotta get that out of the way when you put it back on. All good? Yeah, all good. Put that back on. Tighten it up. The belt rotation is this way. So it's pushing against the material as it comes through. And it, uh, it's held on down fairly lightly by a pair of rollers there and a pair of rollers there. It doesn't do the kind of fierce compression that a planer does. So the material it needs to be fairly flat um, before you run it. So that's set. That's ready to run. So the first thing you need to do when you're operating this machine is make sure that air compressor is pumped up full so it gets full air. If not, you will have bad tracking or it won't run at all turning the belt. The belt can run off and it can be torn up and you waste a belt. So first thing, check the air compressor. It's 
right over there. See that that aisle is pumped up? Any doubt? We'll show you where the breaker box is that turns it on and off. So, this is the belt that runs underneath it, goes through and carries the material. It is, uh, it doesn't get scoops at the end like a planer, so it's great for finishing off to the very end of a piece of wood to get a nice continuous surface. Uh, they, uh, so it runs fairly slow speed, and the distance from here to there has to be set to pretty closely match the planed out material. This only has a range up to one hundredth of an inch, which isn't a lot, but it's sanding. It's not machining so much. So that means that your material can't have a lot of range and thickness either, so one of the rules you all have to remember is if you're going to run something through here, we can, I can coach you through some exceptions, but if you're going to run anything through here, it goes through the planer first so everything's equal. Otherwise, you might hit it, but especially if you hit it with a narrow piece that's maybe three hundredths too tall, you can tear up the belt. You can burn the belt, and that just means you throw away a $30 belt. And, uh, so, that's one of the rules. There is a way to approach it very carefully when you can't find out exactly how thick the material is. But for most circumstances, we have these dial calipers uh, that you turn on right there, and they will zero out wherever they are. So you want to have them pushed closed when you press the dial caliper. To turn it on. Now it will read the thickness of your material and you have to do that uh, and make a little survey and that's your starting point for the height here which is entered digitally according to this digital reading here. They're not always exactly the same so we start at exactly what it says, if it's not sanding significantly, then you work your way with the table a little higher to sand a little more. When you've got that tweak, you run your whole load through. So I'm going to set us up and do a demo of that process. All right, we got to check the calibration. And that's done with these dial calipers. And I'm reading 0.73. Nope, 0.74. Okay, it's in between. It's 0.74 inches, Inch, inches and hundreds, same thing here. That's the scale they use. Now, the accurate way to read this is to grip the calipers and make sure they're 90 degrees. I read a very different dimension when it's crooked like that. And you wiggle it, the least dimension is the realest dimension uh, because that's most directly 90 degrees across. So, we've got that established, 0.73. I like to start with what I actually read, even though it may not sand, because this is calibrated sometimes not all that accurate when somebody destroys the calibration and puts it back. I don't trust it to be right. And I don't want to actually hit that. So, I play, have a little safety, factor of safety we've put in there is that we uh, start with running out of your stack of material, just a couple of them to see how it works. This is assuming your stack of material is all plain and was all run through the planer at the same setting, then you just use some representative samplings. These marks are useful everywhere to make sure that you can clearly see where it's been sanded. Particularly on the sander, I like to mark both sides because then I'm not going to accidentally sand the second side, the first side, twice. We've got to set that to 0.73 and that is done by entering the, uh, the all four digits here in standard order. So the first one is zero because it is not even an inch. Zero, seven, 
didn't take the zero. Zero, seven, uh, three, zero. There it is. It's blinking. That means it's waiting for you to push the third, the middle button in the stack right here. That button makes it execute your instruction. It's at point seven three. Safe to run this because it's, uh, we gave it a little factor of safety. And you turn the motor on, the belt, this switch, the drive belt, this switch, the sanding belt, this switch, and those can turn it off. And this can turn both of them off simultaneously. However, if that is a kill switch, and if you have it down, when you enter your data right here, it just will revert. It won't accept it. It won't do anything. It won't run. It won't, no controls work. I prefer to turn it on and off here so I never have that issue, but I do, other people use this. And sometimes I have to re-enter. So now it's at the right height. And we have two, one other very meaningful issue that we have to, for setup for this. We open that, that gate has to be open. The gate on the planer has to be closed and there's a gate over there that goes to the table saw. It has to be closed. I happen to know they're closed. So we'll just leave that alone. Then there's standard practice is you take this stick and I don't think you can see it up there, but you poke the dust bags to see how full they are, and that the lower bag needs to leave this much reserve. Below the metal ring. You can see the marks. That little safety thing meant and actually that it's really right on the correct calibration. It's sanded just a little bit. We set it to that. So it should hit and miss sand it. So for our, assuming we had a stack of them right there, they were all run, we've got it, cal we've sort of micro calibrated it with the real thing. And we should be able to run all of these through. We should be able to run the whole stack through now, actually taking another hundredth off from what you see here. That is a case by case. If it's wide, it's a hardwood, you can't take as much off. That's on the job experience where you get all of that. So I'm going to increase the height by one hundredth of an inch right here. That is our maximum cut and we know we're good for it because we know what it's cutting now. And we can check one thing though. This is useful sometimes. That says 0.73. This said 0.73. What's it say now where it got sanded? Yeah, it says 0.73. We've checked it every direction. So I can raise that by entering 0720. A little more time consuming than pushing this button right here, which raises it half a hundredth. That's the limit. This is inches, this is tenths, this is hundredths, this is half hundredths. That is only going to accept zero or five. When I push this up button, that means it's going to raise that table up by half a hundredth. So it's now 0.725. That's a quick shortcut, but you have to do it twice to get a hundredth. Now it's 0.72, and we can run it one more time. Okay, that is the amperage gauge. If that gets over 30, it stays there for very long, it's going to pop a breaker. So if you have a wide board, or you want to put in several boards, you fill the width, uh, you watch that, and uh, adjust accordingly. All right, one final thing you all should know. Uh, how the belt tracks is done uh, pneumatically with electric eye sensor. 
and they haven't come up with a better way to do it to make it just automatically track. So here is the electric beam, the uh, light beam. This is the electric eye right here. The belts can get in front, I can, can chop that beam and then all of a sudden this thing says, oh it went dark on me. When it does that, which I'll simulate with my hand, it shifts this, and that causes, this is the top roller carrier, causes the belt to move that way. And once it moves a little bit, then it gets, the light comes back on, and it switches it back. So, because the belt can be stretched on one side, anything can happen. They have to have a control that accommodates these variables. And this is it. So the belt just sits there going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It makes a little ticking sound. You can hear it take the ticking sound. You'll hear that happening while it's running. Now, that can fail. It's very delicate mechanisms. There's uh, adjustments here, and dust can build up on that and make it think the belt is still in the way, in which case that belt's going to keep going and it's going to hit the equivalent of this piece on the other side. If the belt hits that and turns it far enough, you hear that? Then that is going to stop everything. It will turn itself off before the belt tears itself to shreds against whatever it finds in this area, which can be really hard to clean out on this side. Sometimes it'll keep going. That might be in some case then because it doesn't know the belt has left. The, uh, because it's darkened by the dust. And then you'll see the same thing on the other side. Now we have to talk about how you fix when that happens. So the white belt cylinder may just suddenly stop with a piece of wood in it, for that matter. And if it's all, if the control panel is still lit up, it didn't pop the breaker. What it did was, it's that tracking issue. And here's that fail safe. It's already popped. As soon as it popped, everything stopped turning. And you can't do anything with it. If that has been over there, none of, the control, none of the controls work, but you need to move the belt. If you're lucky, and it happened when there was no wood in there, it's simple. Move it over, and do that. And it's now centered, and it'll start running again. If there's a piece of wood caught in there, the pressure of the wood keeps you from being able to slide it, to slide it. So, you have to do your adjustment using this wheel here, which is a manual wheel. And that will uh, allow you to lower it even when it doesn't have power. Before you do that, look at that. Remember that, because you're going to have to put it back right where it was. Uh, or find it again. So memorize that and then lower it and then take your wood out and then move the belt, raise it back by re-entering and go back to work. It happens once in a while. If it happens very often at all, then I make all those adjustments that can take 10 to 15 minutes. So I wait until I have to. So that's how you do that. There's another reason it can stop though. Same routine to get your piece out and same routine to get it back again. But that would be if the control panel is dark. Then if you lower it, it will lose its calibration. That's time consuming to restore. It takes trial and error to find out where it's cutting. So if the reason it goes, it stops is, is the, uh, popping the breaker, which means the control panel went dark, that's your sign, you put the breaker on before you turn that little wheel down below. All good. Now that concludes the certification video for our little tiny wide belt sander. Thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye now.